Hi, and welcome to Old School Blues Guitar. It is time for the signature licks lesson for the month of months of October through December 2020. This will be the final electric blues lesson for 2020. I've still got a couple acoustic lessons on the way. Before I get started with today's signature licks, I would like to do a shameless plug for my one item of merchandise. Actually, I've got a couple. But I have a literally a whole basement full of these t-shirts, old school blues guitar t-shirts. My daughter designed the logo. I had these printed up a couple years ago and I have not sold very many of them. They're just $10 each and I have sizes, I pretty much have everything but medium. I'm a high school teacher and a bunch of my students bought them from me and for some weird reason they all wore medium. So I am currently out of medium. If enough people request one, then I will have some more printed up. But I've got small, large, and extra large. Plenty of them. So if you're looking for something really cool to get for someone you love for Christmas, what could be better than an old school blues guitar t-shirt? Everybody likes a cool t-shirt. And this is kind of cool. That's my guitar that my daughter drew on the front. All right enough of the shameless plugging let's get down to some some guitar playing here this time around for my signature licks lesson i am going to revisit my my lesson that i did on the licks of buddy guy and when i first started playing electric guitar buddy guy was quickly one of my one of my favorites i really enjoy his early recordings the ones he did for for chess records especially and so in this lesson series, I'm going to, or in this lesson, I'm going to go through 15 or so different ideas that I've picked up over the years from listening to Buddy Guy's playing. I'll give you song references whenever possible. I've got com every lick that I'm going to show you completely tabbed out using Guitar Pro 7, and that's available if you check the video description. There's a link there that will take you to the tab. Let's get going. The first example I have for you is from a buddy guy tune called Broken Hearted Blues. It's in the key of D. And this is just an example of a typical buddy guy type lick in the first position blues box. He played a lot in the first position blues box, the second position blues box, and quite a bit playing over the four chord. And I'm going to show you ideas with all in all those positions as we go through these, these 15 licks here. Again, this is from the tune Broken Hearted Blues, and this is just an example of a buddy guy, Philic. He plays this at the end of the first verse. <laughs> playing over the D. The song is in the key of D. And I'm starting out with that typical T-bone walker type electric blues lick where I'm bending up on the third string 12th fret. I've got my first finger anchored on the 10th fret getting the first and second strings. And then I'm touching with my fourth finger on my pinky 13th fret of the second string back to the 11th or the 10th fret. That's the first part of the lick. I'm going to turn my volume up just a little bit. And then from there, we got one of these bends, just briefly, where I'm doing what I call a long bend. I'm using all four fingers, bending up the 13th fret of the second string, and doing a little vibrato in there, but it's a quick lick. And then it's going to go into this. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to the 10th fret, and I'm playing this lick where I'm bending again with a long bend on the first string this time with four fingers, 13th fret of the first string. Bringing it down, then getting the 10th fret of the first string and the second string. And then he wraps it up with a typical little buddy guy thing on the third and fourth strings. 
Check the tab for that one. He gets the 12th fret of the 4th string twice. And then, since this lick comes at the end of a verse, he's going to lead into the next verse. And I'm just going from the 10th fret of the 3rd string, pulling off 12, 10 on the 4th string, to the 12th fret of the 5th string. And I'm just walking 10th fret of the 5th string into my D ninth chord, which signals the start of the verse, the 1. So let's play that whole lick one more time. I'll play it slowly. I may not have played that exactly like Buddy Guy plays it in Broken Hearted Blues, but I think I'm pretty close. And the idea is there, the bends, he's bending on the third string, and then he's going to bend on the first and second string. A lot of bends in there. And then we get these pull-offs and vibrato licks. That's pretty much a lot of the buddy guy techniques there wrapped up in one lick. We're going to do some more examples of his single string runs over the first position blues box, but there's one to get you started. And I always liked that T-Bone Walker type influence that Buddy Guy had, and the thing he does differently is he mixes in those bends, especially on the second and first strings. So there's example number one. Example number two is something he does at the end of a verse on the third string, and the examples I'm going to show you here are from a song called Stone Crazy, which is another one of his great chess recordings. And he does this in a lot of different keys and a lot of different songs, but he gets to the end of a verse and he plays something like this. So what I'm doing here, it's really this lick on the third string. That's what I'm getting at here. And I'm going to show you two different ways that you hear him do this on Stone Crazy. He actually does it several different ways. So I'm starting playing in D again, so I'm starting my the slick on the 4th string, 12th fret, and then I'm climbing chromatically on the 12th, I'm sorry, the 10th to the 11th to the 12th fret of the 3rd string. And then once I get to the 12th fret, I'm just going back and forth, I'm keeping my first two fingers where they're at, and I'm going back and forth between the 12th fret of the 3rd string and the 11th fret. And then, what I'm doing there is I'm going to the 13th fret of the 1st string. And then to the 12th fret of the 3rd string, to the 10th fret of the 2nd string. And then, bending a little bit, I call these one finger bends, the third string at the tenth fret. Then I'm doing another typical buddy guy back and forth on the fourth string, 12, 10, 12, to wrap up the lick. There's a lot more to that run from Stone Crazy, but I'm just trying to, to isolate this one, this one idea. So we got this. And then he's playing at the end of the verse, so he's going to go into the, into the verse. And if you listen to a lot of the Buddy Guy chest recordings on the slower tunes, you'll hear him do that little walk into the ninth chord of the one to start the next verse. Now a variation on this, I, I think this is from Stone Crazy as well, I'm getting confused now. You could do something else with that same lick, he does something like this. Not sure if that whole lick is exactly what he plays, but this part of it. Kind of a neat, quick picking lick that you can play on the fourth string. I'm starting again from the from the twelfth fret of the fourth string, doing the climb. And then right here, I'm going back to the tenth fret of the third string, to the twelfth fret of the fourth string. Then when I start it the second time, I'm starting it from the 10th fret of the 3rd string. So I start the whole lick from the 4th string. But then after that, I'm starting from the 3rd from the string, 10th fret. And you can do a lot.
lot of different things with that. So to play those first two licks, we're in the first position blues box. So if we're in D, we're playing it here. If we're in C, we're here. If we're in A, we're here. And the lick is movable. You can play it in any key as long as you're in the first position blues box. So that's example number two. A, I don't know what to call that, a chromatic lick that you play at the end of a verse leading in to the start of the next verse. Example number four comes from perhaps my favorite early buddy guy song. It's called Stick Around. It's also titled Worried Mind. I'm not sure which one was the main title. It's in the key of C, and this was the first song that I heard when I was young, 18, 19 years old, that really got me into early buddy guy. I thought, what beautiful guitar playing. And there's a lick in the introduction which illustrates one of the, the main things that I've picked up from buddy guy's playing. And Freddie King did this, and a lot of other guys, Magic Sam did this, playing over the four chord, first position blues box. So the tune, Stick Around or Worried Mind, is in the key of C. So there's my first position blues box. In the introduction, which, you know, if you could just learn the guitar and the intro to the song, you've got enough cool buddy guy stuff to last you for quite a while. And he starts out with this kind of lick. And then he's going to go. That's what I really like. So what I'm doing is starting in the first position blues box. What I'm doing here, check the tab for this one. I'm not, I don't want to go through every single note of all these licks because it gets really confusing. But I'm starting the lick on the second string eighth fret. And the key is to hold that note on the 10th fret of the 2nd string. And then this part, what I'm doing is sliding in to the F shape, 1st position, blues box. So the song is in the key of C, my 4 chord is my F. So when he does this, and you hear Buddy Guy do this a lot on his early recordings, he's simply playing over the four of the song. So I'm sliding into that, which is really just an F double stop. I'm sliding to the 14th fret of the third string, and then getting the 13th fret of the second string. And then the bend, we're gonna bend up on the 15th fret of the first string, three-fingered bend. So we got this. And what we're doing is just bending on the 15th fret of the 1st string and also on the 15th fret of the 2nd string. And we've got that note right there, which is the major 3rd in the F, 1st position F, 14th fret of the 3rd string, which we're using as an anchor. Now I've got it tabbed out exactly the way you hear it in the beginning of uh, Stick Around. And if you listen to a lot of Buddy Guy, you'll hear him do this quite a bit in every key. I think it sounds the coolest when he goes to these high positions, past the 12th fret on the neck. Let me play that whole lick from Stick Around slowly, and again, you've got the tab. So the idea here is to be playing over the four chord. When the song goes to the four, we're going to go over the first position blues box up the neck. So instead of playing an F down here, we're going to play in the F here. So here we go. How you pick it, you know, how many times you pick it, and how long you hold it, and if you put vibrato on it, those are all things that you can mix up when you play these, these kind of licks. And Buddy Guy, the thing I really like about his early playing is the way he just lets those notes hang. So when he gets to this, he just uses the vibrato and leaves that note out there. It's just beautiful. If you've never heard this song before, make sure you check it out. Stick around or worried mind in the key of C. So that is example number four. Example number five is another really cool idea that I picked up from listening to early Buddy Guy. 
And this is from a tune called Leave My Girl Alone, which is in the key of B flat. I call these octave licks. And he's playing licks like this. Really neat stuff. And we're in the key of B flat, so again, this lick is going to really be played over the first position blues box. And what I'm doing is I'm basically making a B minor chord. And I'm focusing on the 8th fret of the 4th string and the 6th fret of the 1st string. Those are both B flat notes. So if you pinch those together, you have what's called an octave. You can get some other notes in there too. This is what I think Buddy Guy's doing on these. I don't know for sure. Again, if anyone knows different, correct me because I want to know. But listening to the, his records, and especially the song Leave My Girl Alone, this is how I think he's playing it. What I think he's doing is maybe using the pick, if he's got a pick, and then a bare finger. I'm using my, my uh, second finger on my right hand, and I'm pinching. That's the first position, grabbing the fourth string and the first string. And then he can move that and get the third in the first strings. And then take that ring finger and go to the eighth fret. And you've pretty much got all the position. And you can do a bend on the eighth fret of the third string. The other thing you can do with this position is you can slide to the 9th fret, which is kind of neat. That takes a little doing. I'm not sure if he uses his pinky. I'm using my, my third finger because it's stronger. And then you can move that. So if the song is in B flat, our 4 is going to be our E flat. So when the song goes to E flat, we can play over the E flat. Then back to the B flat. And so forth. Really a neat idea. And another way that you hear him use this song is you can go way up on the neck. I've got my camera set, so I really can't show this to you. But if I'm in B-flat, I can take this lick all the way to the 18th and 20th fret. Try to hold this up for you. Whoops. And play it way up there. So... That's what I think Buddy Guy's doing when you listen to his chest recordings and you hear that kind of lick. Pretty sure he's pinching those octaves over the first position blues box. Listen to Leave My Girl Alone. That's a, just a song that comes to mind right away when I think of those kinds of, of licks. So that's example number five. Buddy Guy octave licks played over the first position blues box. For example number six, we're going to go to one of Buddy Guy's most famous tunes, which is, oh, I can't read the title, Going to School. Stevie Ray Vaughan did it and called it Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's kind of the same, it's the same song, basically. It's in the key of E, and this will provide a good example of Buddy Guy's licks in over the second position blues box, and that's some of his coolest stuff. And what I'm going to do here is show you this lick from Going to School, and then I'll also show you a couple more that I have tabbed out for you, just to show you some things that Buddy Guy does or did in this position. So in going to school, I think it's the second solo, he starts out like this. It's kind of a tough lick. He starts out over the first position blues box, the key is E, and I'm bending up the 15th fret, of the second string while keeping my first finger on the twelfth fret of the first string. And then I'm gonna, gonna do three bends with a little vibrato. 
Those are long bands of the 15th fret of the second string. I'm using all four fingers. And from there, he's going to go to the, first, the second position blues box, which in E is right there. And he's going to bend the 17th fret way up like that. You hear he bends past where he probably should, but then he comes back down. Very cool. Very fast. He plays this quickly. Then he wraps it up with the 15th fret of the first string and then a pull off from the 17th to the 15th fret of the second string. So the whole lick, I'll play it slowly. Very neat stuff. So that is from going to school. And what I like about that lick and what it shows is really Buddy Guy using the bends and holding the bends, getting a really cool sound there. And then also going from the first position blues box to the second position to build up drama, to build up energy in the solo. So this band, that's really neat. Now some other stuff he would do, this isn't from going to school, these are from some other tunes. But when he played over the second position blues box, let's move to the key of D, and we'll just use the 15th fret. This is a little easier for you to see with the camera set up the way it is. Sometimes, you know, he'll bend that the first string, and oftentimes he'll end up on the second string with that, what I call, blue note. Where if we're playing in the key of D, that's a D. He also does a lot of these pull-offs, something like this. Which is kind of cool. And what I'm doing there is simply anchoring my first finger on the 13th fret of the first string, pulling off 15 to 13 on the first string, and then winding up on the 15th fret of the second string. Just playing it really fast. The other little thing in the second position blues box, which you hear him do, is this little chromatic run on the first string. B.B. King, Freddie King, almost every electric blues guitar player uses this to some extent. And we're still in the key of D. I'm starting on the 15th fret of the second string. Then I'm just climbing 13, 14, 15 on the first string. doing different stuff with that. Listen to his early recordings and you'll hear this. I'll tab out a couple examples for you. So the second position blues box from going to school, that's example number six. Example number seven is from an instrumental song that he did in the key of B flat. It's called Night Flight and it's one of my favorite early buddy guy songs and in there he uses one lick that you hear him use quite a bit and another one that you don't hear very often, but it's really, really neat. So I'll show you both of these. Example number seven is this lick right here. Pretty simple idea. Here we are in B flat. Here's our second position blues box between the 10th and the 9th, or the 11th and the 9th frets. And then what we're doing is I'm putting my first finger on the ninth fret of the first and second strings and just hammering on to the eleventh fret of the second string and getting both strings. And in Night Flight, he just plays this over and over again. He does a little variation of it on, with the eleventh fret of the first string, but the basic lick is on the second string. Kind of a neat thing you can throw in in the middle of a solo. A couple of Buddy Guy's early songs, he uses it as an introduction. He's got one, I can't remember the name of the song, but it goes something like this. Something like that. So any key you play in, if you play an A, find your second position blues box, anchor that first finger. You're playing in D. Simple 
lick. Buddy Guy used it a lot. It's one of my favorites. If you're playing a solo and you get stuck, don't know what to play, that's something you can throw in and keep playing until you think of what you're going to play next. All right, that's example number seven. Now I've got another one from Night Flight, which is a little more unusual. This is a little bass type turnaround that I really only heard Buddy Guy use. Chuck Berry used this in one of his instrumentals. I can't remember, it's called Liverpool Drive or something like that. It's kind of a backwards turnaround. If we're in B-flat, which is what Night Flight's in, we can play the standard turnaround. Probably heard that before. We can go to the first and second strings and play. Like that. In Night Flight, you hear him play this turnaround. It goes like this. One more time. This little lick here, I've tried playing it a couple different ways using my pinky. I think it's easier if you just use your third finger and stretch that first finger. Kind of a neat turnaround. And what I'm doing is the key note is the fourth string, eighth fret. I've got my ring finger on it. Then I'm taking my first finger to the fifth fret of the fifth string. So I've got this. Then I'm just walking that from the fifth fret to the eighth fret till I join up with my ring finger there. So we got kind of a neat little turnaround. So in context, he plays it like this. Which I just think is is neat. So you could use that in a lot of different ways. Sort of a different kind of, of turnaround, very unusual. Now that same position, you also hear him use played over the second position bar chord. Let's go to back to going to school in the key of E. So here's my first position E. There's my second position E bar chord, and he uses that same finger position and does something like this. Really neat idea. So I've got my, this time I'm using my pinky because it's just easier. I've got it on the ninth fret of the third string, so I'm on the third and fourth strings. And my first finger is on the sixth fret of the fourth string, and then I'm walking it to the ninth. And then throwing in the E, the seventh fret of the fifth string. So we got this. So a couple different ways. If this is our first position blues box in B flat, we can play it here. If we're playing in other keys, we can find that position over the second position bar chord, move to the third and fourth string throw that in. Listen to going to school and it's right at the end of the song before the end, before the fade out. I can't remember how he ends that song. The fade out of the end tag. He plays these couple different variations of lick. Something like that. Two diff he plays it two different ways. But that's how he's getting that sound. If you listen to Liverpool Drive by Chuck Berry, he uses those same licks. It's really, he plays it a lot faster, more rock and rollish. And I wonder if Buddy Guy learned those licks from Chuck Berry, or if Chuck Berry learned them from Buddy Guy. Or maybe they just each figured it out on their own, or picked it up from somebody else. So that's example number eight, these uh, double-stop turnaround type things, type licks.